The New York City Toy Fair wraps up today, and one of the most popular toys there, scooters, made by an Irish company called Evolution. They've been available in the States for a couple of years now, but the company has only recently entered the Canadian market. With that comes challenges, of course. Shane Connaughton is co-owner of Evolution. Great to have you with us. Great. Thanks. Thanks for having me on. So let's start with uh, with the hottest toy you've got. I mean, I think it's this. Uh, it's your scooter that is called the Flicker. Uh, in terms of, of yeah. how it was received at the Toy Fair, how's how's it looking? Well, it's they've been raving about it basically. Uh, the white Flicker scooter, um, huge success in uh, in our small market in Ireland. But uh, since we've brought it to North America, um, yeah, they're really loving it over here. So, Sean, first of all, welcome to a fellow Irishman. I've kissed the Blarney Stone. I want you to know I'm Irish, too, so I'm very <laughs> proud of you. But I, but I have a question Good as, man, Kevin. as an investor in the toy space for decades. Sure. What I've learned about yeah. this space is to get a perennial toy, like a skateboard, is very, very rare, or a bicycle. These products come and are trans for generally three, four years, and then the company, that's you, has to come up with something else to maintain the sales growth. Are you concerned about that with this sure. product? No, Kevin. I think that uh, this, this product is going to be a new platform, something like a, like the BMX. So BMX came and hit 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 the shelves in the 70s and uh, you know it, it, it was a platform so we think that the white flicker is going to be a platform a scooter platform that's going to be around for decades so one of the trends obviously but that you're going to tap into ta sorry go ahead sorry well one, one of the things that Kevin was, was speaking about there was the worry that if the, the flicker does uh, you know tank um, that we have we have other products, other other new technologies in the scooter space coming on stream anyway. So I, I guess, and in, in, in that same vein, uh, you're tapping into this uh, this idea that we need to get kids more active. We want to get them out and playing with things. Uh, and you've obviously had success sure. already at Toys R Us. Just getting into the the Canadian market, uh, how how kind of big a market do you envision for the Y Flicker? Oh, it's it's the the numbers are going to be pretty huge. I mean, it, it will go viral uh, next year, and uh, it, the kids just love it, you know. So when one kid on the street gets a, fl a white flicker, straight away the the other children are want to play on it, and suddenly, uh, you know, next Christmas it's on all their lists. One of the other attributes I look at is toy companies, particularly startups, because if you get on a trajectory like you're suggesting, you can build a lot of value for your shareholders. Seasonality has always been a problem in the toy market. Is this a situation where 80% of your sales come in one quarter, or because of the nature of this product, a bicycle-like platform, if you want to call it that, can I get more even sales across the year? Yeah, well, that that is a problem for our, for the toy industry. But we do have uh, spring, is you know when you know the weather starts to change. So we do expect you know that that flattens out our our our, our you know income. But still, most of the the sales are in yes in Christmas Christmas period. Can you give us a sense of what you're seeing at the toy fair and some of the kind of internal work that you're doing to kind of tap into the trends you're seeing? What's really hot? Um, you know, we just basically come over. We show we show our products. Uh, I walk the fair and look for new colors, technologies, textures, uh, linkages. So we bring that back then, and we see what we can do with our product line. I can't. I won't. I won't point to too many trends because mm -hmm. I want to give away the, the good stuff. Tell me about your manufacturing. Is it all done in China? Is that changing? Are, you, are your costs going up? These are some of the discussions many toy companies are having, moving uh, manufacturing out of uh, China to places like Vietnam. What are you doing? Sure, yeah, it, it, is, it is a concern, but no, we, we haven't got plans to change that just yet. Uh, so we, we'll stick. We've got good partners in, in, in Asia, and uh, we will stick with them for the foreseeable future. But we'll monitor you know, what happens with uh, Vietnam and all these other lower-cost uh, manufacturing countries. Can you also tell me, you're in 40 countries. Uh, there's a big push to get Canadian businesses exporting uh, beyond the U.S., which is an easy place for us to get to. How complex is it to get a product out into the world like that? Uh, it is quite complex, yeah. But, you know, Canada has been a little bit challenging because you have, you have four languages and packages. Um, it's also it's a it's a big product, um, so it it is challenging. But we're we're, we're we've we've had such a success story with the Flickr, um, so we we know that we can be successful worldwide with it. All right, Shane, great to have you with us today. Appreciate your time. Great.
Super. Thanks, Amanda. Shane Thanks, Condon Kevin. is co-owner of Evolution. Coming up after the break, an explosive race that went just a little too far. Our Places Moment is next.